Hi everyone, thanks for making the left turn for today, Saturday, November 29th, 2014. I'm George Ferrar and welcome back to the Jack's Left channel and welcome back to another edition of History Jacksonville. Uh, once again, we're out exploring uh, a neighborhood of Jacksonville and here we are in La Villa, uh, Jacksonville's original suburb, an African-American neighborhood that really came of age in the early 20th century that is uh, uh, quite an amazing place that we're gonna learn more about today. Uh, I'm in front of the Ritz Theater. We're putting on the Ritz today. Uh, this theater was built in 1929 and all that remains of the original structure is the stucco wall uh, facade uh, and the Ritz sign. It opened as a movie theater uh, and this was La Villa's entertainment district. Uh, we're going to see a lot of different places uh, today, uh, and I'm really excited to be able to bring it to you. Uh, we're uh, going to look at Old Stanton High School, fire station number four. We're going to look at uh, different uh, places uh, such as the Masonic Temple uh, and the Old Richmond Hotel, among other places. We're going to talk about history of our first suburb. We're gonna talk about the history of this neighborhood that truly uh, has changed over the years as society has changed. Originally, uh, this was uh, the heart of the African-American community in Jacksonville before desegregation. Before desegregation, blacks and whites lived, worked, and played in different neighborhoods. It wasn't until the 1950s and the 1960s, thanks to civil rights activists and people fighting for societal change, that people began to live, work, and play of different races together. Uh, and with the, with the building of the Matthews Bridge and the development of Arlington, along with Regency Square Mall, and the Regency Theater, if you remember the old Regency Theater, the uh, things had changed uh, and this neighborhood went into a decline. Uh, there was greater crime. The theater here, the movie theater here, closed in 1971. I remember, uh, as a youngster, uh, being on King's Road, uh, waiting at that light to get onto Interstate 95 with my family and seeing the dilapidated state of this theater, and you will see that in just a moment. We've come a long way here in Jacksonville. The River City Renaissance Plan that was uh, made possible by mayors uh, Ed Austin and John Delaney and the people of Jacksonville who uh, decided to, to fund it. Uh, this plan uh, enabled the Ritz Theater uh, and Museum uh, to be uh, constructed. And I remember coming through here in December of 1997 uh, before uh, this portion, of, uh, this new portion of the theater was and where it was still abandoned. And I remember the Jacksonville Urban League building, this building here was actually under construction. We're going to look at a lot of different things today. We're going to look at La Villa's history and we're going to look at the impact that the River City Renaissance redevelopment had and a later construction has had on this neighborhood. There are fewer homes, fewer places for people to live here. Uh, and I think that that is something that is a shortcoming. Uh, so while there has been this effort, uh, there is a lot more to do. And there's a lot to see today on History Jacksonville. You're gonna have a great time. You know, I'd hope to actually show more, even more, uh, as uh, uh, further uh, south into the neighborhood, uh, but there was a fire. Uh, the old Davis Furniture Company building, historic old, old warehouse building, uh, burned last night uh, and uh, collapsed. So an area that I wanted to go through and show you uh, has of course been cordoned off by police and fire authorities. But you're gonna see a lot today. You're gonna see uh, more of the theater, uh, the uh, outside here of the theater, and you're gonna see the old Stanton High School, you're going to see a lot of the different places, including fire station number four, uh, which is still in operation. Uh, so there's a lot of great things you're going to see. And so you know what time it is. It's time to say it. Let's roll it.
We're now in front of Old Stanton High School. Shortly after the Civil War, an organization called the Freedmen's Bureau was formed to help African Americans adapt to post-Civil War society. We call it, now, we call it Reconstruction. And so in the years following the Civil War, uh, various schools were built for African Americans here in Jacksonville, but they were, they were wooden, they weren't really up to standard, uh, and uh, one even burned down in 1901 during the Great Fire. Finally, in 1917, the school board was pressured by the school trustees to build what you see today, what we now call Old Stanton High School. Stanton, uh, the namesake for this school, uh, was Edwin Stanton, President Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of War. So this school was built, and up until the early 1950s, it was Stanton High School. It was a junior high school for several years after that, uh, and then became a uh, Voke Tech adult education school, but closed in 1971. James Weldon Johnson was uh, quite a Renaissance man. He, uh, he was an educator, a lawyer, a diplomat, a writer, a poet, and an activist. And he wrote a poem called Lift Every Voice and Sing. Uh, it was to honor Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln, our president from 1861 until his assassination in 1865. His brother, James Weldon Johnson's brother, put that poem to music and it became known as the Negro National Anthem. And it was to be sung by students of Stanton High School. So there's a lot of a, a great legacy here in La Villa, and we're gonna see even more of that right now. This is the Loach Furniture Building. As you can see, there's office space for lease. Now, this building doesn't really look like much of anything, does it? But in 1909, it was built as the Richmond Hotel, and jazz greats such as Billie Holiday, Duke Ellington, and Cab Calloway stayed here. So there is an amazing legacy in these dilapidated buildings uh, that we see uh, from time to time here in La Villa. But then, right next door, we have the Masonic Temple. Next door to Deloach Furniture, is an amazingly intricate building built somewhere between 1912 and 1916. And as you can see, it houses the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons. And it is of Prairie School architecture. And as you can see, as we zoom in, the amazingly intricate detail. Truly a treasure here in La Villa and truly greatly restored and maintained. And not far in fact, across the street from the Duval County Courthouse.
This is fire station number four, still in operation. It was built in 1944. And in the early morning hours of today, November 29th, 2014, they were called upon to fight a fire uh, at the old Davis Furniture Company warehouse, only several blocks away. So it's good to see that uh, you can see where uh, older uh, buildings in this neighborhood uh, are still uh, doing uh, or being able to be a part of uh, current operations for our Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department. As part of the River City Renaissance redevelopment of the La Villa neighborhood in the 1990s, many houses were torn down. So these houses are some survivors, as you can see by the, uh, the gables, the awnings, the, uh, the high porches, uh, the windows. Uh, you can see that these are, I would say, early 20th century houses. And so what, what an amazing find uh, here in this neighborhood. Uh, when uh, many of these types of houses or what uh, also houses that are called shotgun houses, we'll talk about that later. Uh, when uh, those houses uh, were um, uh, condemned or taken uh, by the city, uh, the residents uh, of those houses were moved to temporary accommodations at the old Ambassador Hotel. And you'll see pictures of the old Ambassador Hotel uh, in a moment. And uh, you'll see that uh, the Ambassador Hotel itself was condemned not long thereafter. Uh, so uh, it seemed that the residents of this neighborhood, while it was a high crime area and had a lot of crime problems, uh, that is quite uh, something to think about. Uh, the fact is there are fewer residents in La Villa today than there were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and certainly 30 to 50 years ago. So it'll be interesting to see, will these houses still be standing five to 10 years from now? We'll see. As you can see, Jefferson Street is shut down because of the fire from last night, early morning hours of this morning. Uh, the uh, road is blocked off. But as you can see though, looking around, you can see that a lot of the emphasis lately has been in office buildings. But it does seem that the leadership of the city uh, is more focused on it seems in this area, the development of office buildings, uh, but not as much on residential. This is Old Brewster Hospital. It was built in 1885, originally as a residence. It became a hospital, the first hospital for African Americans here in Jacksonville in 1901. But within 10 years, it had actually outgrown uh, this structure. Uh, and originally, this structure wasn't even uh, here at this site. It was uh, further away uh, down Monroe Street. Uh, it was moved to this location in 2005. 
Here we are in November 2014, and while it's been rehabilitated, we see a fence around it, uh, but not much more. Uh, at least it's been rehabilitated. At least it looks, it looks pretty nice. Now it all, all it needs is a purpose. And this is traffic coming into the villa on Union Street from Interstate 95. Here we see uh, some new homes, which shows what's possible. But as you can see though, uh, we see it uh, in a small way. Hopefully eventually we can see it more in a big way here in Jacksonville. I'm in front of three shotgun houses. Now, the shotgun house was a typical house that you would see a lot of throughout Jacksonville, even as late as the 1980s, I remember them. And I remember seeing them on Union and State Streets. There's fewer of them now, and what we do have left are quietly and gently decaying amidst the hustle and bustle of Jacksonville. And it's too bad uh, that it seems that not much really can be done with these structures. Uh, there's a lot that we can do here in Jacksonville for affordable housing. But it's gonna take the leadership, the desire of the people, uh, and the votes on the council, and certainly the funding for it, to make affordable housing in La Villa and downtown a reality. It was something that was overlooked uh, quite uh, remarkably. Uh, sometimes I'll be looking at these as I put together History Jacksonville, I'll be looking at these pictures uh, and I'll be thinking, you know, it, it kind of looks like Detroit. Uh, I know that we have the will and we have the passion amongst the people here in Jacksonville. It's just we've got to somehow find a way. So I hope one day to see more opportunities and see better housing for the people of Jacksonville here in La Villa and elsewhere. Jacksonville is indeed a city of contrast. We have our $400 million Duval County Courthouse. We have the Bank of America building, the Everbank building, and only a block or so away from the courthouse, we have this abandoned structure. And of course, as we see often, we have Palm trees. I want to thank you for joining me on History Jacksonville today. We've only just begun and the best is yet to come. I'm hoping that over time, in the next year, more people will join me and put focus onto what needs to be done here in the city of Jacksonville. And you know, I'm going to different neighborhoods throughout Jacksonville to look at, uh, at the best uh, and call upon our leadership to do what's right for the people of Jacksonville. So I, it's my hope that you'll join me. Uh, it's my hope that you'll check us out on the leftturnnetwork.com and on Facebook and on at the Jack's Left on Twitter. There's so much going on and I'm glad to be really getting things going uh, so that we can really start to look at what's going on here in the city and hold our leadership to task. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.